Good morning everyone, we've taken a look at a few different sorts pulled against their will into a bizarre world of nightmares, but why don't we just cut to the chase and get right to the guy behind the curtain, the one pulling all the strings so to speak. But then is he really the one pulling the strings, or is there something even greater controlling his narrative? Well today we'll do our best to find out as we cover Maxwell from Don't Starve. Maxwell, whose true name is in fact William Carter, is a tall, smartly dressed man, appearing to be in his early to mid 40s. He most frequently appears dressed in a black suit and tie, with a distinctive red rose pinned to his lapel, and is known as the Puppet Master. This is due to his ability to control the shadow creatures and doppelgangers of himself, as well as pull others into the world of the constant. At first effectively a nobody, through dark means Maxwell become a world famous magician, and was eventually pulled into the constant for his deeds, becoming master of the realm, but also a prisoner of it. Prior to coming in contact with the Constant, William was a simple and poor man from London who dreamt of becoming a magician. His dreams would be realised when he came upon the Codex Umbra, which he set to obsessively deciphering, granting him an array of strange shadow-based abilities. While it's currently unknown exactly how he came upon the book, it appears that he had not long been in possession of it when he was involved in a train crash. Using the book to save himself through granting the strongman, Wolfgang, superhuman strength, William would disappear, presumably to study the tome in peace. The next time he would be seen, would be as a performing magician in San Francisco, having given himself the stage name of The Amazing Maxwell, performing tricks using the Codex Umbra with Charlie as his assistant. As time went on, the duo would become successful and potentially even begin a relationship, but Maxwell would eventually develop an obsession with the Codex Umbra as he delved deeper into its contents, pushing Charlie away and slowly going insane. His obsession with the book would come to a head when, while performing a show, they would both be sucked into the constant by the book itself. From this action, it would seem as though some unseen creatures of the constant had been grooming Maxwell, and when they deemed that he was ready, they would install him on the Nightmare Throne. From there, these creatures would simply watch, presumably for their own entertainment, as Maxwell built a warped world from the dust and void that had been the constant. Whether compelled to do so, or through his own volition, Maxwell would bring others to the void, seemingly those who had knowledge of him or the shadow creatures. These would include the strongman who had saved him, Willow who had been plagued by the shadow since childhood, and who Maxwell would even use to do his bidding before taking her into the constant and Mrs. Wickerbottom, who Maxwell used as a repository of knowledge. There was even Wendy, Maxwell's niece, who he may have abducted just to have family nearby. In time, one of his survivors would replace Maxwell on the Nightmare Throne, but Maxwell seems unsure if he was the one who grew tired of the appointment, or if the powers who watched the Constant had grown tired of him. Either way, he leaves the throne and crumbles to dust, replaced by a succession of survivors, ending in Charlie, who had survived the Constant and would reshape it in her own image. This is not the end for Maxwell, however, however, as he was reborn back into the constant as a survivor himself. Potentially this is a result of Charlie, corrupted by the shadows, wishing to take vengeance for being pushed away and trapped in the constant. Regardless, Maxwell retains some control over the shadows and uses his abilities to help other survivors. He is eventually contacted by Charlie, however, who seems to miss them working together and offers him a partnership, possibly to rule over the constant together. From here it is unknown what happened to Maxwell, although it appears as though he is poised to return to his devious ways. Then again, his time with the survivors could have changed him and he could ultimately assist in freeing everyone from the constant. Only time will tell. Maxwell would not remotely be a person of note had it not been for the Codex Umbra, granting him supernatural powers. It does, however, appear to be his own conviction and commitment to the book which drew the attention of the shadow creatures in the first place. Regardless, due to the power Maxwell comes to wield on the Nightmare Throne, and even in his deposed state, he must be assigned a notoriety of high. We can all give at least one example of someone driven mad by eldritch knowledge, or some fantastical book or another, and Maxwell seems like just another in that long line. But what strikes me is that at the end, when he leaves the throne, he is very frail and very human, which seems to set him apart somewhat, makes him more interesting. Anyways, please subscribe for more in the lecture series, and don't forget to become a patron to support the course, and suggest your own topics. Now, remember never to trust tall men wielding shadow powers, as if that needs to be stated out loud, and I'll see you next time.